it's six o'clock in the morning. Not the best time of day for me. Marie's fast asleep upstairs. It's been such a joy to see her, but I've got to sneak out without waking her. Portugal, here I come. Just as soon as I can get myself out of this bed. No one's as surprised as me that I've made this flight. I've landed in Lisbon and now I'm going to go and find my American friend Mason to start an awfully big adventure driving all the way back from here to La Land. Our itinerary is based around amazing hotels that I've been wanting to stay at for ages so we should have an epic week ahead. First stop. Ooh, from the minute I walk in, something tells me I'm going to like this place. I'm in absolute shock at how incredible the bedroom is. I mean, okay, let's start with the bathroom. This might be one of the finest bathrooms. There's a tree and a fireplace opposite the jacuzzi with a fountain into it and a skylight. I can't believe this. The bedroom manages to be beachy, laid back and luxurious all at the same time. And I love the tiny finishing touches that have been thought through everywhere. And look at the view. Oh, I've missed seeing the sea. The holiday's off to a great start. Mason is from Vermont and he's brought me this goodie bag of the finest things that Vermont has to offer. I mean, look at the size of this maple syrup. It's huge. And these products. They're from Vermont, they're only made with natural ingredients. I'm so excited, I can't wait to try everything. Sweet syrup and beauty products. Wow, he knows me well. Oh, feels like Christmas. It was hard to drag myself out of that bedroom, but I think I should go and see the sea a little closer and maybe stop by their organic vegetable garden on the way. What are you making? Mr. Some sandwich. And why, why is this good? It's sweet and spicy. Which bit's spicy, which bit's sweet? The leaf is spicy and the flower has a little honey in it. Hmm, it's very pretty. Here's my sandwich. Look how beautiful that is. That is amazingly good. It's ridiculously good. It's a spiciness. It's heaven! Good grief, what is Mason doing? Admittedly, he can be a little eccentric at times. Being a little less energetic, I think I'll stick to sitting on the bench. This is the most beautiful hotel imaginable. I think I'm going to enjoy this holiday a lot. I've got just enough time to enjoy the sunset and then it's off for dinner. For years now, Mason and I have been arguing about his wardrobe and this shirt is another classic. At least we're always in complete agreement over the food. And here we have delicious Portuguese nibbles. Mmm, kale fritters and half a nasturtium sandwich, peas with chorizo, and most importantly, a pile of cheese, because we are on a solemn mission to find the best cheese in Portugal, so we have to order it whenever it's on a menu. And for a half French woman, there's no meal without wine. I realise you can't see most of this, but this is the way I found the room as I've come back from the restaurant this evening. And I have to show you the bathroom. Look, the whole bathroom is lit with candles. It's so beautiful. I actually have a fireplace in my bathroom at Lalan, but I never think to light it. That's changing from now on. I think this might actually be the best hotel room I've ever stayed in. It's the most spectacular view. There's amazing music. It's just so gorgeous. When I arrived in my room last night, Everything was lit with candles. The bathroom is beyond amazing. I'm gonna go and meet Mason for breakfast now and we'll see what breakfast is like. Mmm, we're off to a good start to the day. What's it to be? Portuguese egg custard tarts or maybe a delicious omelette? This is the life. I've missed the sea. Okay, everyone, you'll know I'm holding the camera, not putting a wetsuit on. Can you swim? <laughs> Barely. What are the odds of you coming back out of the water alive? Hopeful. What does the wax do? Makes it so you can you stick to it. Okay. Uh, without the wax, it's amazing. It's super slippery. Wetting our surfboards. I can't wait for June. 
This is the beach bar owned by our hotel and we've come down here so that Mason can go surfing and so that I can far more sedately enjoy a view of the sea. I'm having a lovely relaxing time here setting up my new computer, looking at the sea. Well, I've just glanced up and I've realised that I can't see Mason anywhere. Is that a bad sign? He is. Tiny speck in the distance. He's fine. Looks as though I still have a travelling companion after all. Good morning, everybody. I have woken up in paradise, but there has been trouble in paradise. A mosquito has bitten me all over my forehead and on my eyelid. Honestly, that's better than it was first thing this morning, but I think it's going to have to be a sunglasses day today. It's time to leave this beautiful hotel and move on to the next stop. The eye is not much better. There we go, I'm rocking the Quasimodo look today. And here's a tip for anyone out there, mosquito bites the cheaper alternative to fillers. <laughs> it's time to move on as we inch our way towards La Lande and we've stopped in the beautiful town of Tamar for a quick bite to eat and to visit the stunning 12th century Templar stronghold here. The Templars were warrior monks who took part in many crusades and in this part of the world they helped to push back the armies of the Caliph. Their church was heavily fortified and it doesn't give away the secrets of the breathtaking interior. Can you imagine? We're standing in an 800 year old church. The Templars often built round churches based on the holy site that they'd seen in Jerusalem and in fact there's one very near me at Lalande. The altar is an octagon which was considered a sacred shape. The Templars remained here for hundreds of years until their order was disbanded in the 14th century. This building then became the Convent of Christ. Its leader was Prince Henry the Navigator and this place became the centre of Portuguese discoveries and maritime achievements. It was hugely expanded and as you can see here even the architecture reflected the importance of sea voyages. You can see the ropes and the corals encrusting the whole building. Being here is a wonderful journey through centuries of history and if you're ever in Portugal I really recommend visiting Tomar. And now it's on to the ancient town of Coimbra, once the capital of Portugal, where we'll be stopping for the night. This absolutely beautiful palace was built on the site of the former royal palace. And I'm in heaven because our suite is the only bedroom in the original wing. And walking to it, it feels as though we have the entire palace to ourselves through these beautiful sitting rooms. I have a huge room in the old part. Look at that bed. Oh, it's like time travel and a view of the amazing gardens of this old palace. I think I could get quite used to staying in a royal palace. This place is amazing. I'm going to leave my beautiful room in the palace and brave the rain to tell you the reason why I chose this hotel. And that's because of a love story that happened here set hundreds of years ago. As we walk through this stunning garden, we will be traveling over 650 years back through time to the 14th century, when this park was the hunting grounds of the palace. The king of the time was Afonso IV and his son, the prince, was called Dom Pedro. His son loved hunting and would often come to this forest to hunt. King Afonso had, as was usual at the time, forced his son to marry a woman whom he wasn't interested in, Costanza, for diplomatic reasons. But Dom Pedro fell madly in love with his cousin, the Donna Inez. But in true Romeo and Juliet fashion, their love was impossible, not only because he was married, but because their families were bitter enemies but the prince refused to listen to his father and pursued Ines regardless. So the king had her exiled to a convent only 500 metres from this spot. Undaunted, when Pedro came here to hunt, he would use this conduit that leads through the forest to the convent to send love letters to her, put onto little wooden boats. She would sneak out and they would meet here. For years, they could only meet in secret or write passionate letters to each other. But finally, after the death of his wife, Pedro started living openly with Inez and they even had three children together. The king tried everything to persuade his son to leave the woman he loved. But even though he refused and he'd been living with Inez for years and they had a family, his father's rage did not abate. One day, 
Whilst Pedro was out hunting, his father came with three assassins to this spot in the woods where he found Inez and her children. He spared the lives of the children, but allowed the assassins to kill Inez for the sake of the realm. She was beheaded on this spot, and local legend says that the stones are still stained red with her blood. Pedro was inconsolable and flew into a rage. And when he became king only a couple of years later on his father's death, he hunted down the assassins and had their hearts ripped from their living bodies, saying that they were people who did not deserve hearts. In an even more macabre twist, he had her crowned queen after her death. Her body was dressed in state and the nobles were made to kneel and kiss the hand of their dead queen. And remember, unlike Romeo and Juliet, this was a true story. It's touched so many visitors to this place over the years. And one was the Duke of Wellington who came and stayed here when he was chasing Napoleon out of Portugal. He was so moved by the story of Pedro and Inez that he had a memorial stone for them erected on this site. Here he had a verse written from a Portuguese epic poem. See yon fresh fountain flowing midst the flowers, tears are its waters and its name Amores. Back in my palatial bedroom, I can see the star-crossed lovers from my bed. That's perfect, Mason. Absolutely perfect. I like your artistry. There they are, the lovers with the forbidden fruit. After a long day of travelling, we didn't feel like going out, so we decided to come to the restaurant in the hotel, which was an epic decision because this has turned out to be one of the best meals of my life. Of course we had the obligatory cheese in our continued quest, but maybe the most extraordinary part was a pebble from the fountain stained with Inez's blood, and when you ate it it turned out to be chocolate holding sweet delicious liqueur. I thought I'd eaten all I could, but on getting back to my room I found port and, much to my delight, little egg custard tarts. Mmm, I think I can be tempted. Wow, I'm blown away by the meal that I just had. I can't describe how magical and whimsical and delicious it was. And the good news is that my eye has started to go down even though my forehead is still lump. And... That open window there is my bedroom window. It's the sort of window that really requires a Romeo standing beneath, but looking pretty quiet down there. I had the best night's sleep in that room and this view, I can't describe what it feels like to wake up to this and to know that I was looking out onto a garden filled with hundreds of years of history, intrigue, romance, love, tragedy, passion. I really don't want to leave, but we're off to our next adventure, this time in Porto. This is such a cool bedroom corridor. It's all mirrored along one side and I love the most, the doors. And I'm in the Mondrian suite. Here's my bedroom in the Toral Avant-Garde. And I'm sorry because I forgot to vlog it as I walked in. So I have some of my things in it now. Each of the rooms here is based on a different artist. I really like the clean lines and I especially like the splashes of color. And the two balconies in this space, which is fairly luxurious. One in the sitting area and one in the bedroom. And look at the view. I know I'm a complete geek, but I'm going to show you my wardrobe because I'm so pleased with how colour coordinated it is. Because whenever I go on holiday, I try to have a wardrobe that matches itself. I don't know why I do that. So you can see, this is my autumn wardrobe. I've gone for russets and reds, rich blues. Today has been a wildly exciting day. After knowing him for years and being desperate to see him in better clothes, as you'll know from seeing the vlog so far, Today, Mason said that he wanted a makeover and he's been clothes shopping. I can't wait to see the result. Also, I'm a bit scared. I'm waiting for Mason in the awesome flower room here. This is just the best room in the world. And oh my God, <laughs> that, <laughs> that is one hell of a transformation. <laughs> Are you excited? Do you want to taste some pot? Do. Dude, you're duding me publicly. He says dude a lot. It can mean many things. <laughs> so this is what compromise looks like. Mason's wearing actual clothes that make him look like a human being. So I'm wearing flat shoes that I can walk around the town in. I'm on holiday with a real human. He's gonna stop talking to me if I carry on filming him pretty soon. We're going down there. What are we going to do down there? Wine and dine appropriately. 
Oh good, I do love a good bit of appropriate whining and dining. It's actually quite lucky I wore the flat shoes because there's a lot of up and down in this town. This place is beautiful. Mason <laughs> managed to keep this a secret literally right up until the gondola arrived. I did not know we were coming in this. This is so cool. Where are we going? Never ending or beginning on an ever spinning rail. Like to snowball down the mountain in a carnival balloon. Well, I, I'm no wiser than I was at the beginning of the question, but thank you. Apparently, this is the port and snack gondola, according to Mason, and it's going to take us to port and lots of snacks. It's more than 40 years old in Berlin. It's probably my age, actually. <laughs> Mason and I are doing a bar crawl. Instead of going to a restaurant, we're just having little bar snacks and tasting ports as we work our way around the river. And the evening finishes with clams in butter and garlic and wine. Might be raining just a bit. This is the purest selection for breakfast. I'm quite pleased with this. It took a long time for me to curate the perfect selection. As usual, Mason's gone for the slightly healthier option. I'm so snug in the blankets. And I'm having my chausson au pomme and tea. I like being outside but all wrapped up and warm. This is perfect. It doesn't get much better than this. Honestly, the minute I fall in love with the place, it's time to move again. Next stop, Burgos. More glorious weather on our holiday, but at least we've arrived at this stunning tower in Spain. Let's hope it's warm and snug inside. Wow. I'd heard a lot about this family-run hotel and a 14th century tower, but I wasn't expecting something this magnificent. I've never ever been to a castle that feels so authentic and solid and masculine, yet where every detail is finished to perfection. I can't wait to show you my room here. It is the girliest delight imaginable. What a welcoming sight at the end of a five-hour drive. Look at that! Everything is in the same fabric. The bed and the walls and the curtains. I'm just swathed in pink. The bathroom's behind me, but ahead of me are the sink and the bath and a glorious view. There, I'm all set up for the evening. Look at that bath. An Aqua di Palma and Molten Brown. I'm in heaven. Another evening, another epic meal awaits. But you look so elegant, Mason. <laughs> oh, I love torturing him. Weirdly, Mason and I have been talking a lot about black pudding and not being able to find it. I don't know why we're obsessed with black pudding now. And we finally saw it on a menu, so black pudding it is. And sirloin steak with melted cheese and onion. I'm in Villaroy and Bosch heaven. For one espresso, I get all this porcelain. <laughs> Waking up in this room is like a fairy tale. It's given me lots and lots of ideas for La Lande. The four poster hasn't actually got any posts, it's suspended from the ceiling, and I can see how it's been made, and I think I could pretty easily recreate it. It seems to be some sort of rail, and then the fabric is just velcroed to it, and there's a little rope holding it to the ceiling at the base, and the headboard is simply attached to the wall. But right now I have to jump into the shower and get ready to go to France. Today is the last day of our holiday. We're going to stop in Bordeaux on the way back to La Lande. And look, as I make it to France and nearer to La Lande, a rainbow appears. We're in Bordeaux where we'll be meeting Natty tomorrow. Many of you will remember her from previous vlogs. I'm so excited she'll come back to La Lande with us. But tonight we're heading out for a night on the town in Bordeaux. Ah, oh, the final feast. And we're truly in France. Baked camembert with tapenade, steak tartare, delicious dips. Mmm. <laughs> It's the last morning of the holiday and my last Ursa Major essential face wipe. I've become quite addicted to these things. Check this out for a quick and easy morning routine. Oh, and it smells incredible. 
Oh look, face washed. I mean, if you'd seen more of Mason in the video, you'd know how extremely unlikely it is that he would turn up with my new favorite beauty product. I'm increasingly getting frustrated that I can't describe scents to you better. It's quite piney. Oh, hola. <laughs> I'm so happy you're coming back. This is going to be great. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. You see, just as we arrive, the skies are blue. The whole of Europe is raining, but not La Land. I'd just like to thank you, Mason, for driving me all the way from Lisbon to La Land. Avec plaisir. Thank you so much. I was not expecting that. I was expecting a Saki comment. No, those are common. <laughs> Well, I've been waiting all summer for that holiday and it was worth every second of the wait. But now I'm tucked back up in my own bed and happy to be home at La Lange.